give people the impression of something that's not worth paying attention to. But the reality is that that's an exoteric for the masses of people who don't understand representation. The esoteric meaning is that it's the opium poppy, what the Sumerians call the joy plant. This poppy is closely linked to the archangel Gabriel. It was, after all, the Arabs who had the tradition of growing opium poppies, and they still have this tradition. Afghanistan, for example. Wonder why we're there. Uh, it was of the Arab tradition that we have the prophet Muhammad who meets in a cave with the archangel Gabriel, the opium poppy spirit. Uh, we're clay temples, and what we imbibe changes our natural spirit. You know, where we have, this is me, this is my nature, I like these things, I like this and that. That's our spirit. And when we have this other uh, chemistry come over us, there is a different spirit, a different leaning towards the, either the right-handed path or the left-handed path that comes over us. Okay, well that brings us to the Jews. Then the Christians took over, um, basically, the Jewish tradition, because they said, well, the psilocybin mushroom has been locked away by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Only the Essenes kept a record of these magical plants. And that's where we got the Dead Sea Scrolls from the Essenes. Uh, and Jesus said, well, this is ridiculous. You've hidden the keys to the kingdom. You won't let the people go in, and you yourselves don't go in. So, after three years of teaching his disciples that basic distinction between this is good and this is bad, and faith and grace, Jesus held the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, he presented, as you can see here, the psilocybin mushrooms. Now, when he did this, Judas finally had the evidence he needed to turn Jesus in. Here we see Jesus on the cross, and in the background of this fabric, you can see popping up here the psilocybin mushroom with eyes, an entity, a spirit, a consciousness, something that comes over this temple and raises our conscience, our sense of right and wrong, our sense of energy of life force, the tree of life. Now, was this why Jesus was crucified? It does appear to be. And is this how he resurrected? It does appear to be. Let's take a look at some of the evidence that supports this idea. Basically, the earliest crosses were made up of four conjoining mushrooms. That gives a completely different spin on the idea of pick up your cross and bear it, or carry it. These come from the Coptic tradition of, e of Christianity. It was down in Egypt. And you can see these are four conjoining mushrooms. This early cross, or the Rose Cross as it was known, is essentially coming from the, the book Song of Songs, where Solomon says, through the Spirit of God, as God describes himself, I am the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valleys. So, we have this piece of information about the original cross. But just like the Acantia leaves were, were the cover that covered over the true message of the opium poppies that we saw in the Jewish temples and were seen in the ancient Indian temples and show up in the uh, clay pottery on the incense altars of the Mesoamerican peoples, so the acanthia leaf covers over the opium poppy, so symbols begin to cover over the, uh, the tree of life, that psilocybin mushroom. One of the symbols is the scallop shell. You see, or, you see it here, dating back into the early Jewish tradition. This is the Ten Commandments, and next to it a priest who's got his hands in the shape of a mushroom. And above them both, this is the scallop shell. Now, if you take this same scallop shell and this tradition of the Tree of Life, you can take it anywhere, even into the Assyrian culture. Here we see winged beings, and these winged beings, or entities, are
approaching and picking the fruit from the tree of life shown here with the scallop shell at its center. Now, this fruit that they're picking, if you take out a single piece of it and look at it, it's a watery symbol or a water symbol with a cap, a stem and a cap. Mushrooms, psilocybin included, are 92% water and they have this living water quality. So this living water was being used by all cultures, but it wasn't until the Jewish culture, the Christian culture, that the other sacraments were pushed aside, and this one was represented as the name of the Most High. They knew God, and yet they did not treat Him as God. They treated Him as oh, just another thing, you know. These other things are going to make us feel better about our personal egos, so let's talk about these things the Amanita Muscaria and the Morning Glory, for example. Well, as the Christians uh, pursued this path of secretly getting out the message of the Tree of Life to the Gentiles and the Jews, uh, they ran into the problem of the Roman Empire, which were the descendants of Nimrod, because they had continued this concept of uniting all the people underneath a human god, in this case the, uh, the emperor of Rome. It was the same thing in Egypt. Pharaoh considered himself an emperor, I mean a god, for the same reason. They used the Amanita Muscaria, they used the morning glory, um, and they thought, well I'm it. I must be all that there is. I am the exalted one. And this is what the Roman emperors did. And so Rome began to persecute the Christians. Um, and the Ottoman Empire, the Muslims, using uh, the Archangel Gabriel, raised their hand against all people, and all people raised their hands against the Muslims, and so it is today still. It's unfortunate because, you know, we're all of one flesh. But here comes this, this, this mass of the Caesarean uh, 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 Islam, and they wipe out Israel and Jerusalem, and so the Christians have pushed up into Turkey, now you can see here the Turkish monuments that are left behind. Besides the Ark, we have the, the uh, civilization of the Christians that was in Cappadocia and Gorm. And these homes, these houses that this monastery of Christians uh, took refuge in, they carved into the shape of these mushrooms. Inside you can see humans, uh, Christians, riding on horses in their cape. You see the mushroom and they're fighting or slaying the serpent, the dragon, uh, that, that uh, pestilence of wickedness that continues to cause wars and uh, things which are against that uh, basic precept of the Ten Commandments that, or the Golden Rule, that I should not do unto you anything that I don't want done to myself. Okay, well, more and more we see the merger of the symbolism so that you can no longer see the tree of life as a mushroom. Although these early Bibles do show the mushroom. Here we have an Ethiopian Bible and there's Jesus sitting among three mushrooms. We also can see Jesus standing on the cross here with his disciples and they're looking at these mushroom trees that he has left them with as a, as a console, as a consolation. As he said, I am going to be with the Father. You should come stand where I am now. And the Holy Spirit will come into you and remind you of everything I have said. And so this is the nature that psilocybin brings to this clay vessel, these temples. That's why I'm here to tell you these things. Okay, so we've looked at Gorm, Cappadocia, with all of its mushroom-like churches and those individuals with their glowing eyes and large halos. Now what happened to all those people? If that was really true, why didn't anyone tell us that in Sunday school? The answer is that the Holy Roman Empire happened. The empire builders, the Nimrods, the Hercules, these Amanita Muscaria and uh, Morning Glory users and their multitude of serfs and peasants under them basically decided that if they could not kill the Christians by feeding them to lions, that every time they killed one, ten more sprang up because there is this communion wafer, this mushroom, that allows 
people to have a divine relationship 